All right. Um, it's been about a year and a bit now since I did a last update. Um, I was just getting into the covering, I guess, when I did the the update last winter. I figured I better get an update done before I bring it to the airport. The plan is is to bring the airplane this week to the airport. Um, what you see here is about uh, 12 months of building. I took the summer off because we flew the tent a bunch and went to Oshkosh and everything else like that. So what I'm going to do, I, I don't have anything real formal here, but I'm going to go kind of throughout the airplane and as I look at different things and things come to mind that might help people that are building, um, I'll just kind of go through that and point them out and of course uh, don't be shy to ask questions on the forum if there's more stuff that you want to learn um, when you're seeing certain things in the video that you just didn't quite catch. So anyway, I'll start going with the uh, wingtips I guess. Uh, basically what I have on the wingtips is a uh, the Avail uh, nav and strobe lights, uh, really nice, really bright and light. Um, as you can see the way the slats work on here, I'll go a little more detail how, how they attach. But that's basically how, the, uh, how they look when they're in the open position. All right, so when you're setting these slats, they are fairly finicky, so you're trying to set them in such a way when you build them that you've got clearance so you don't have to worry about that skin hitting the fabric on the top. So you can do that by adjusting washers above and below the bolts when you do final install as well. But you've got little items here that's got to be clipped and notched just to make sure you've got clearances. So one of the items that happens, there's a well, it hasn't been out yet, but it's kind of a service bolt. And you'll see there's a washer on the dog bone. That washer is there so you can actually get better pressure on the rubber. And the reason for that is the rubber was getting split, I guess, after a thousand hours of flying. So uh, that's what they did. Uh, they come now with a welded washer on, but uh, they sent washers to me. I decided to just use your regular... AN washer that's CAD plated already and the stainless rivet and then I use some pro seal in there so I didn't have to go through it all again. So that's kind of how the slats work. Um, keep going around the wing I guess. So this is the install that I've done on the front and rear pickups and of course I've used all AN fittings here and I had to slot the hole. This is the slot here for the visual on the fuel. And uh, I made a, an effort to use the same slot for the other fitting uh, for the front pickup on the tank. So that seems to work fine. Everything's clear and uh, should be fine. Pedo is here. Now this is the uh, outside air temperature probe. So needless to say, I had to run it through here because I, I can't un unwire that. I wasn't going to anyway at the front end of it to put it through a hole. So that gets in a good idea on how the actual wing root looks and so on. I'll uh, continue down the bottom of the wing for the strut and pickup points. Uh, in here you're going to get, there is plates that they send now that you've got to bend and curve and cut the notch. It'll be a little dark in here I'm sure but uh, you can kind of get to see how those attach. And the slot isn't quite in the right place. You see I had to slot them a fair bit. This is where the hole was in order to make it work and fit because these are all a bit of an angle. Now one of the things too on the actual flap attachments make sure you put the big washer here on the outside all right so that ball ever fails you're not going to lose anything you need a washer in there it's a drawing show but I've also added another thin washer because I found this whole system too loose there wasn't enough room the washers these plastic washers would actually move and go down into the side and that wasn't so the big one would be next to the other one on the small um, bolt and it doesn't work that way so you need to you need to make sure that you can see this the movement I have in there but this washer here is really can't move anywhere because this the one on the outside would slide over far enough that the second one in would then slide down at the same spot I don't know that makes sense or not but uh, anyway I've done that and that definitely solved it okay as far as um, the way I've plumbed the, the fuel system in the cabin here's the door set up uh, nothing special there, just Lexan. 
Uh, in the cabin, I've uh, plumb selector valves in the back. Again, I did a transition from the AN fittings. Um, sorry, the uh, flex line down into the actual uh, aluminum, soft aluminum line that went into the header tank. So then I got the bigger header tank in there. Uh, that's a requirement because I'm running the 914. I'll uh, show you a bit more in the back, I guess. So you'll see I ran a fuel flow meter there. That was for the return flow. Uh, because there's a return line on the 914 and in the back I have the TCW, TWC, sorry I can't remember what it is. Anyway, the backup battery system because I'm running the G3X. I'll show you as a panel in a second here. So everything's still open up, but I have to get an inspection here soon so that'll stay that way. You can see the Lexan in the top, the way it looks. So this is the panel uh, that I've done. I got the G3X in there, uh, Garmin radio and Garmin transponder, so all full Garmin stack basically. Um, I put a, got the choke in there, I got cabin heat and uh, brake, park brake, so you can see that in here, that's what I've done. I'm waiting for my labeling to be done, I basically, the way I wired it is I got the turnkey to, for the wire to allow the start button to be active. Uh, to start the engine. So once the engine started, I could technically take the key out. I got the ignition switches here. Simple push the talk on the stick, and that's about it. And I'll take is around the other side here in a second. I've put a Odyssey battery. It's under the seat here, and I have the master relay in there too. Um, I originally had the Aero Volts in there, which is great battery, super light. But of course, I was wanting to see how well it charged and I left the EFIS on to watch and realized I had it on trickle charge and of course it drawed more power than the actual uh, charger was doing and drained the battery down too low and I think I killed the battery so you can imagine every time you leave, an EF leave your master on it costs you 250 bucks for a new battery I figured that's not really a, a way I want to go so I went with the heavy route and uh, less chance of any safety issues too with the fact of that other battery getting hot and melting under your butt. I really don't want that. So I only read one case of it, but uh, anyway, I'm sure there's probably others. You need to be able to monitor the cells. If you can monitor the cells, then I'm going to put it in. And the aerovolts, I couldn't at this time, unless there is need to do some more research. So didn't know enough about it to feel comfortable. Um, okay, I'll go around the other side and just show you a bit of the pump system. All right, so again, I didn't want to use any rubber lines in the airplane. So um, I've got the Anandar filter here with, I think it's a 100 micron uh, filter system uh, before the pumps. And then I did a transition from basically the pumps to the shortest fuel line I could with the barb fittings. And then I went from there through the pump system with the check valves and so on. And then I've got another, uh, you don't, you want to keep it in a straight line. So I got a real slight curve there. Uh, for the forward end of the the pump or sorry the uh, fuel flow and um, That goes up to the selector valve uh, as well. I got selector valves in the main tank. I've just got it there as well for Well, it's kind of I don't know I really don't need it actually with the other valves But it's another place to shut gas off to the engine if you're trying to get it off quicker I guess if, uh, something's wrong cause If I can't shut it off there, I have to burn all of that header tank uh, off before I have to can shut all the gas off. So obviously that's a good reason to have a selector valve. Uh, run up the lines of coax antennas are all in the back is where I have them there. And you can see how the flaps come together. And some of the cables, everything just goes slack when you uh, basically uh, fold the wing. Okay, so I'll uh, go through the front here. This is how the gear is set up. Nothing too special. Dual caliper brakes. And the attach points, there's an AD on the links in the back. I questioned the factory on that, and I never got a response, an email. i got to give them a call. I just don't have time. And uh, there's our doodle, golden doodle. She's always out here. Okay, um, I'll take you through the engine. So it's a 914 install. Um, not a whole lot special here. So what I've done is I brought the actual inlets for the fuel here. 
I fire sleeved it right away. So as you can see, it's fire sleeved as it comes up. Um, and then basically connects in to the engine up there. I've got a manifold pressure comes down and I also have a fuel flow pressure on the other side, which I fire sleeved. So you can see the three fire sleeves up there. Um, I've got heat muff around the muffler here with a tight elbow in order for it to clear. You can kind of see how that looks underneath in the rad everything there and then basically here's the one little stainless rivet with the clamp on it and the wire tied off for the um, tailpipe that's what guys are doing it seems to be working so i'll keep an eye on it but uh, i just hoping there was something a little more sophisticated than that but uh, anyway we'll see how it goes um coming around this side you can just see how the heat muff works rad hookups um what else should I talk about here? Well, I'll go around here and show you the actual top. I'll get up top here for you. Ah, so you just can see how the, everything fits on the root and the windshield. I'm waiting for more plastic washers, so I haven't done this yet on the windshield, so the screw still got to go in. But you can see all the panel work inside. I've got to do the dash. I just got some cardboard now. I'm going to start cutting to make the shape on that, but uh, it can get done a little later on. And then I've done the rivet work here over the painted, which I think looks great. And that's how I seal the cowling and just put a little bit of silicone in the corners and I'll put a bead on the inside of the cowling. It'll look good just for it to be airtight. Is what I've got there. All right, so back to the engine. Uh, the turbo control I got here for the servo. Uh, regulator I got down here I've put a thermostat in on the oil because you need that of course I just want the all the end fittings I've used all the summit fittings I've ordered them and uh, they really were nice a uh, much easier to do well not a whole lot easier but they were easier than the aero clip and uh, less money as well so it was good I had two EGT probes and such in there and uh, that's about it. There's really not much you do for customization on the 914, the Rotax. It's kind of, you get it as a package. There's not a lot of work to do for the install. So it's not like a light combing. It's kind of put together what you got and there's not a whole lot to add. So you can see my intake I have here for the fresh air coming into the cabin heat. So hopefully that works okay. The engine has been run. Everything's working as it should. So like I say, we'll be bringing it down to the airport this week. All right, so this is a bit of the other side of the airplane. Nothing really new, same hookup, same everything. I just don't have a temperature probe. And you'll see at the top corner where the wing, you need to cut your Lexan at a bit of a 45 because that's going to foul. So don't put that on and think you're good. You need that clearance. I did about a one inch cut at a 45 degree and it just clears when the wings fold. Of course, it varies depending on how long you extend that Lexan, but that's what worked for me. So uh, anyway, just keep an eye out on that. Uh, added the plate here, which everybody's done. I, I'm really kind of not sure what I'm going to do here because this keeps peeling back and you hit it and it peels back no matter how much I try to put contact cement and such. So a bent piece of aluminum square I think is what I'll be doing for all of this area. And I know guys have done it. It looks looks really good. You see the flap set up here. And then I've done the locking tail wheel on the trim because I've got the trim as electric in the panel. So. So anyway, that's basically what that looks like. Labeling, I should have this week. They called me today to tell me they'll have me my price and get it to me before the week's out. So that'll be good. And last little thing here, I guess, is the cowling. This is what it looks like here. I've uh, used the micro sun light. I made a bracket on there for it. That's uh, for the fresh air, cold air on the... Uh, turbo and the air intake. I've got that light wiring basically as a connector. I've got a connector on the side so it's very easy to connect and disconnect for cowling removal. Um, put all the foil down, do a silicone trim around the perimeter of it just to decrease the chance of it uh, lifting up. And for some reason I had trouble with this one. This, this didn't stick really as good as what I was the other ones have done on my other RVs but uh, so I had to 
put silicone underneath it and then re-silicone the perimeter on some of the areas so it can stay down. Uh, you can see what the actual light looks like and this is the baffling around for the oil cooler on the front. It's all a Stewart's paint system that I've used so you can hopefully see in the video how good it looks. Um, waterborne paint I could spray in here. You can see on the floor where the mark is where I did all my spraying and um, it was great. I could spray and within the time I got the gun clean and everything else you'd hardly could smell any paint in the garage so uh, it basically was gone with the exhaust. I had a full filter bank and so on in here so anyway that's about it. The trailering I guess a uh, couple of things I did is I built the bracket here. I don't know if you can buy these at the factory. I would assume you can but I just bought a piece of chromolity and built this. I gotta powder coat it. But ties the ends so now the wing is solid. I'll I got a paper towel roll there, but I'm going to put uh, a nice triangular shaped foamy in there and uh, get it clamped or taped or something for shipping. And um, I'm going to build a block here that's going to be bolted to the hole and down tight to this. So this got a little bit of movement, but it's pretty well going to stay where it is and we'll tie it down to the truck that way. So that should be all right. I just got to tie this up a bit. That's my ELT stuff I haven't finished. Uh, I just got to get a splitter on that one to finish it up. So probably just do it once I get to the to the hangar. Anyway, you get to see uh, what it all looks like now. I'll do a video, of course, once it's ready to fly. But uh, that's kind of all the particulars. It's not a real complicated airplane, but uh, there's lots of friggin' to figure it all out because it's not uh, it's not just custom like your or sorry it's you're more customizing everything because the it's not been real all planned out like uh, an RV kit is. You got to do a lot of head scratching to come up with the best the best way to do it. I, I think building other airplanes that had a well laid out kit sure made this one easier because I knew some really good techniques to hopefully make it as good as I could make it. And um, anyway, I'm pretty happy with it all. Uh, it's going to be neat to have a simple airplane fly, just throttle, and that's it. This is a Cato prop. This is supposed to be the prop to have as long as you want short field. I got an RV-10 to go fast, so this will be my airplane to go slow. And it'll take off in a couple of lengths of itself. This is a 41-inch pitch. I don't know uh, is what this one is, so it's set up for the 914. And I got the spinner on it and so on, so. Anyway, that's it. That's all. I don't know of anything else to say. And uh, looking forward to taking it down to the airport and opening the wings and leaving them open just because it's kind of a pain in the butt taking it in and out in the garage. Great option for people that don't have a hanger but uh, I prefer leaving the wings open. I guess header tank or sorry the main fuel tanks you can see there too what I've done as well and what how all that looks. So I got the covers downstairs they're all painted and done I just haven't installed them. Anyway, there you go, over and out, and we'll uh, get some shot of it, I guess, when it's all labeled and the upholstery's all put in for good, and it looks like it's ready to fly. All right.